Alright guys, I had a user ask me um, how I would go about modeling uh, this form that you see right now uh, in 3ds Max. He had done the modeling in Revit um, and was just asking how I would go about doing it in 3ds Max. So that's what I'm going to show you guys just real quickly how to do that um, organic form in 3ds Max. There's actually a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, we can start out with uh, a line um, and if I actually isolate this just so you guys don't see anything else. I can start with the line. You can either draw it in Max or you can draw it uh, in CAD or, or whatever program that you want to draw it in and just bring in that line work. Um, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to extrude that line. Um, and if I hit F4 to kind of show you what's going on with the shading here, um, I've segmented the line 25 times um, just so that as I begin to make the manipulations to it, I can um, have it respond and be you know, stepped in organic versus uh, something like a value of one or zero, which will not allow me to have something that uh, is curved or organic in the end. Uh, the next thing I did was with my edit poly modifier, I just selected all of my surfaces and uh, flipped it around. Um, I could even redo that step if I put the edit poly on there. I just grabbed all of my surfaces and, and flipped them so that, you know, I could kind of see what's going on there. Um, the next thing I did was uh, what's called an FFD, 4x4x4, and what that basically allows you to do is um, create a lattice work around your object that you can then start to control and manipulate. Um, so if I were to get rid of that and actually do a new FFD, 4x4x4 modifier on here, I could then come into the sub-level of control points, uh, grab some control points, and then begin to modify this shape as I need to. Um, you know, I could just grab these top points and make this modification where it's coming up, and you know, etc. You know, you're a little bit limited in terms of what you can do, though. Um, so, I mean, if you're just kind of doing some basic stuff, um, maybe rotating your end around, things like that, um, you know, this, this isn't that bad of an option. If you want to do something just kind of quickly in max, um, you know, you could also scale these points if you wanted to affect your geometry that way um, you know or just scale these points here on the end so I mean there's you know a variety of things that you can do with it but again I, I feel you're a little bit limited just kind of going um, with this option and you know then you can of course uh, apply a mesh smooth on there and if I kind of turn that off just to kind of smooth out your surface and get something um, looking a little bit better you know if you really wanted to get into the nitty-gritty of it you could uh, always put an edit, another edit poly on top of here Go into your uh, vertices uh, sublevel. Turn on your soft selection. Um, you know, make sure your your soft selection is kind of large enough, and then you can begin to uh, come in here. And I just I right clicked and I make sure I'm in the world instead of uh, local. So I'll go to my world modifier here. You know, you can then begin to like tweak this if, if, as you as you uh, you know feel necessary. So. Maybe you're doing some kind of modifications like this to it. That, you know, who knows? I'm just kind of uh, playing around here. But, you know, that kind of gets the point across where I can begin to take a shape, extrude it, and then modify it as necessary. And, of course, I could always right-click and enter in different values for, for what I'm moving that. Like, if I, in the X, I wanted to move it 50 feet. You know, I could then move that 50 feet. Obviously, that's a little bit too much. So, uh, we'll do something like, you know, 10 feet, what, whatever it may be. Or if I grab this point and I want to move it 15 feet in the x direction you know I can then do that so you know you could always do that and then of course if it's an edit poly on top of there you could always turn it on and off um, so that's the first option the second option would be if I get out of my ice, uh, isolation mode here you have a series of shapes um, that are all attached so if I was in here uh, I would actually grab one of these shapes and you know I'd have um, basically uh, just a series of them. Uh, I don't want to use soft selection. I just want to grab this shape and make a copy of it. So you would be within one shape and basically just holding shift and dragging it over. You can make uh, copies of your shapes or you know you could I guess you could draw a, a series of different lines. Um, if I was in here and I have one line and another line and another line so those are my three shapes. I could always then come into my modify panel come with here to attach and then attach those all together so that they're all on the same object. Um, once they are all on the same object, 
what you can do is you can apply a cross-section modifier uh, with that cross-section modifier on there um, you then apply a surface modifier you want to make sure the surface modifier is set to uh, zero steps and then the last thing um, that you can do is you apply a uh, mesh smooth just on there to smooth that out so that's the last step on there and if I, I go in here you can see it's it's a little more simplified than, than the last shape um, and it's just kind of a series of cross sections that you're working with uh, in 3ds max third option would be you have a uh, path curve um, that basically you want to follow and what you do is you apply a sweep modifier to it um, so once that sweep modifier is applied, you, you know, you can pull it down here from the stack, but I'm using sweep quite a bit, so I have it as a button. Um, you select a custom shape, you select pick, and you pick that custom shape to sweep, sweep along the path. And again, my, uh, my normals are kind of messed up here, so I just want to flip those around. Um, the other thing you can kind of do, if, if you don't like the way that's looking, uh, you can adjust it from within the sweep, um, under the sweep parameters here. Uh, you could either mirror it around or, or mirror it uh, that way or uh, offset it you know if you if you want to offset this by like 10 feet you could offset it by 10 feet um, you know you could change change your angle here so you can do a little bit of manipulation change where it's uh, where the alignment is happening so you can do some manipulation uh, easily within the sweep modifier as well um, or, you know, again, you could apply even an FFD on top of the sweep um, and then come in here and start to do some different stuff to this, you know, if I wanted to bring that up and then take all these and scale them down so that it pinches, you know. But again, it's, it's not a, a super drastic kind of thing that's responding with like a one-to-one -one, because you can see this FFD is, is coming up here like this, but that shape really doesn't respond and, and do that quite uh, exactly the same so um, like I said you're a little bit limited you can do some basic kind of modifications with it um, but it's it's not it's not something that oops, let me undo that it's not something that I would necessarily recommend for your kind of overall uh, shape generation um, you know like I said you're a little limited in it so or you know if I wanted to do an edit poly and then come in here Again, I would just make sure I have soft selection on, uh, make sure I actually have something applied there, and then I could begin to, you know, take and modify this as, as needed. So that's uh, another option that you could, could work with. Uh, and then the last option is under the Create panel, you have to uh, go to your geometry and come to Compound Objects. And then what you do is you do a loft command. And again, you're going to select a path. Um, and then from that path, you're going to go to 100%, which is basically the end of the path. Um, if you wanted to, I guess you could, you know, I guess you could do like 50%. And then so, so if I move this kind of out of the way here, you can see I have my, my shape is still there. My path is still there. My other shape is still there. Um, so what I could then do is, like I said, once I'm in the loft command, um, I could go to 100%, do get shape grab that other shape and then what it's doing is it's basically merging between those two along that uh, along that rail or along that path that you're moving along um, if I wanted to do it at like 50% for example uh, let me let me come here and I'll make it just a copy of this guy and I'll take all these modifiers off so that's just a shape now over here line um, I could come in here and then at 50% I could do get shape and do that. So now what that's doing, this loft here, uh, is basically merging between those three different shapes. Um, so if I, I have something kind of specific with my cross, cross section, I can then do that. And then what's, what's nice about this is if I come in here and then uh, begin to modify, so if I hit escape to get out of my loft and come over here to like my vert sub level, if I come in here and start to modify this, you can see that's updating on my lofted area. So as I make these kind of modifications to it, it's automatically updating on that surface as well. And I believe the same should be true for my my path here. If I come in, I'm just going to grab this vert, vert here and modify this path, you can see it's then updating as well. So 
you know, you, again, you have uh, quite a bit of play with what you can do here. Um, and so I think this is probably one of the, the better options is using the loft, um, selecting your specific curves at your points that you want it to in order to get something similar, um, you know, out of max. And again, if you're your stuff is kind of facing backwards there. Uh, you could always just drop an edit poly on it um, and make sure you flip your elements around so that everything is visible out to the front. And um, you know, also when you're dealing with something like this in, in Loft, you can see it's kind of meshing it gnarly. You might want to come down and just make sure you take off all of your smoothing groups. And if you do do some smooth, you would do like a mesh smooth or, or something like that. Um, either that or you take them off and you just do an auto smooth on top of it so that it's it's smoothing out appropriately and not doing anything too gnarly on you. Uh, so that's basically it. Those are the couple of options that are available. Um, you know, there's there's a few other ways that you could do it too, but uh, those are some, some basic ways that you could easily do it. And then uh, the final thing that I would do, you can see yours kind of had some thickness in the beginning. Um, so what I would do is add a shell modifier on top of this and just give it thickness in the end. So so that it's actually like, a you know, some concrete wall or, or whatever it is or, or surface that is, uh, you know, has a thickness to it. Um, so that's it. Again, there's a couple other ways to do it, but these are pretty much uh, the most more basic ones and easier easier with things to do without getting into nerve surfaces or, or anything like that. Um, and that's it. Thanks.